Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to another day of Porch Talk. Wow, what a beautiful video. Oh, wasn't it precious? Man, she has a beautiful family. She does. Today is a beautiful, hot day. <laughs> <laughs> With a lots of humidity. With my favorite. I love <laughs> I love to sweat. And um, Kim just got back on her trip. We she was out of town last week. She went to Colorado and <gasps> sent me lots of pictures with her uh, hiking and beautiful waterfalls and yeah, and ten percent humidity. My hair stayed in the same place. That is the only thing about winter. I don't like the cold, but I have better hair days in the winter than I do the summertime. <laughs> I like summer though because I sweat <laughs> and I love, I love the heat. Um, I love sweating. I love walking and working out and, um, Hey honey. So we've had, uh, it's been so far a great year, right? And we have yeah. a one year anniversary coming up. I'm afraid. <laughs> no, you know what she's afraid of? She's afraid of what I'm going to do yeah. because I have some plans that, um, she probably don't know about and uh, we're going to revisit the past and um <laughs> anyways um please not the first one well the thing about it is the cool thing is god always says to remember yes, and we have to remember does. because when we remember it shows how far we've come right how far <laughs> we've grown how far he stretched us which he's stretching everybody right yes. now i know we're not the only ones well. so we're just excited that you're on today hi lauren kim's daughter's on here today we're excited about today and um, i'm excited about our guest i am too and she holds a special place in my heart um she is um my niece um by marriage and um and so we are so excited we um we're, when we were up in colorado last month and um, we were talking about our book and my husband said well why don't you have her on porch talk yeah and i said what a great idea yes. so uh, we are so excited to have deb hall yes. on porch talk this Hi, deb. morning good to see good morning. you good to good see morning. you you too thanks for having me well, I have to say, um, my daughter put on here uh, her message this morning. It says, I can't wait for this next hour. Yeah. She is so excited about hearing um, your story and all that God wants to share through you this morning. I we got to, I got to meet her for the first time a few days ago, and I just really enjoyed hearing your testimony and your story. So I'm anxious for you to share it with our with our viewers uh, this morning. We appreciate you being on and making this porch talk very special because it's a um, it's something that a lot of women I think will take comfort in. Mm -hmm. And I believe you're going to bring so much hope and encouragement by sharing your personal testimony. Yes. Yeah. So, well, let's just um, jump right on in and, and just start um, start it going. So can you um, share a little bit of your testimony and how you met your wonderful husband, Andrew, and, and how long you've been married. Yeah, so I'm originally from California, um, was raised in Southern California. My husband and I met um, when we both had sort of separately come to Colorado. He from Texas and I from uh, having been in Boise, Idaho for, for, for grad school. And so we... Um, we met at church we were kind of going to two separate churches and we're not sure which one we met at first. So we just say we met at church and, um, you know, I had been seeking the, the Lord in kind of my own gradual, slow ways, uh, over the years and, um, came to know Jesus right before I met my husband. Um, and then soon after was baptized here in Colorado and we've been living here ever since. How exciting. And you've been married coming up soon. How many years? We're about to celebrate our 20th wedding anniversary. Wow. Congratulations. That's awesome. That, that's awesome. So walk us through some of the emotions as a newly married couple. You know, you get married, you find the perfect home and you just have this, uh, these dreams, you know, and of planning a home and a future. 
And as all couples do, when they get to that point, they start planning for a family. Um, lead us through that um, that journey that you went through with your husband as you started walking through that. You know, what was that like? And when did you come to the realization that it may never happen? Hmm. So uh, we decided to, at a certain point, you know, to start trying and 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 decided to keep it um, to ourselves for um, a good year. Uh, well, we didn't plan for the year, but we it ended up being um, a, a year before we really shared with anybody else that we were trying to conceive, which was special for us in, in some ways. Um, and then after that year, we did start sharing and it, um, it was a, it was sometimes bittersweet to share it with friends, you know, who knew, you know, my heart to, to be a mom, um, that it is that we were, that we were on the path, but it was also kind of hard because it wasn't happening after a year. And technically after a year of trying to conceive, that's the definition of infertility. Um, depending on who you ask, but generally speaking, that's the definition. So, um, and then really another year went by of, of trying to conceive and seeking some medical help and, you know, um, being frustrated, having months go by one after the other of, of no, no, um, none of those two lines on the pregnancy test. And, um, you know, it's kind of a roller coaster. And, and then eventually I, you know, you talk about the sort of realizing it might not happen. It's, it's a roller coaster because it's, it's kind of, you get hopeful and then you get stressed and then you kind of need a break. Um, at least that's how it was for us for a while. And beside before we decided to pursue adoption. So how many years did you continue trying to conceive a child before you decided to go um, the route of adoption? I think it was about two and a half years. Yeah, so it was that first year of not um, just kind of being on our own with it and then another year of off and on sort of trying to make it happen more so. And then and then I took some time off from work, from, from teaching with a leave of absence, um, just to give myself a little bit of a break. And soon after that, um, you know, with kind of more and more sort of Pregnancies going on around me. We just kind of got to the point where we said, "This is." Um, I talk about this in the book that that it became a question for me, and I think this is 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 sort of pivotal of whether I wanted to, whether which was more important, motherhood or pregnancy, mm -hmm. and everybody answers that question a little bit differently. Um, after what we had been through and the, the, the nature of kind of how things were playing out for our relationship, it just made sense to pursue adoption in, um, I think it was January of 2008. So it was about two and a half years. Wow. Take us through a journey um, emotionally, even how your husband looked at it, where you finally had to, where you finally let go of that dream of what a family looked like and how the Lord was going to bring that family into existence. Um, what did that look like emotionally for your husband separately for you and then together as a couple? Hmm. You know, it's interesting because I, I don't remember as a young girl having big, like even wedding or, or pregnancy dreams or motherhood dreams. I knew I wanted to be a mom, I knew, but I didn't, I'm not, I didn't have those big um, visions necessarily. And so when it became a matter of that question, that kind of which route do we kind of decide on for us, um, and then we, we chose adoption, it was affirming and it was one of those journeys where where, where you, you're trying to sense God's um, guidance and, and his going before you and, and sort of showing you the steps. And so when, when you're, you and your spouse are at peace together on something, like we were on adoption, because we were both um, excited about it from day one. And, you know, um, it was never a question. It was never a... a, 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 a quandary it was but once we decided 
it felt very affirming. My husband was very on board. It was an exciting kind of adventure to go on together. And so it did veer us in a different direction. So emotionally, it was a relief um, and it was it was exciting. Um, but again, the, you know, like like going into trying to conceive, there's a lot of unknowns and you're, you're just sort of um, trying to rest in God and rest in his plan. And, and yet, and yet there's a lot of, of heart, you know, there's a lot of hard emotions along the way for sure. Yeah, for sure. I, and I loved how um, you had so much support. Uh, you were saying the other day, you had so much support from Andrew that he, um, you know, he wanted to go and go ahead and just try to adopt. And, and that, that really just helped you um, both together step into that place of, of looking to adoption mm -hmm. and, and what a blessing that has been for the yeah, two. And I think, yeah. And I think one of the things as it, it, while that's our story, you know, I think one of the things that's, that's important about infertility or, or, significant is is the toll it can take on on a couple you know because there's so many decisions whether it's the infertility road or the adoption road um but there's so many extra decisions it feels like that it that can be really um difficult and it was for us i talk about that in the book you know that we were not always on the same page about what we should do next and 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 that was tough and then and then the emotions of later realizing how never being pregnant was still wearing on me and still hard on my heart and him sort of not having a natural ability to understand that understandably that was hard for us for a while. Well, and, and I just want to share with everyone that um, Deb has a sister, a twin sister named Angie. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we wanted to find about how did you feel um, when your sister was able to uh, conceive and have two children? How did, what, what was the emotions that you felt? What, you know, how did you walk through that? Uh, you know, it, it probably because she and I are so close and she and I, um, you know, we're close, but we, we have, we compare, you know, we're competitive. It not in, not in a bad way. Well, you know, it's just natural, like, um, comparing. And so the, the, the reality was I was super jealous and, you know, and jealousy. I talk about that a lot in the book because it's, it was so raw, especially her second pregnancy. Um, and that's really what um, drove me to finally sit down and write this book and, and, and try to heal um, and, and sort of be able to not be triggered so much. So, you know, you talk about finding out about her pregnancies was very triggering. You know, she was older. It was far past, you know, when I had um, stopped trying, when we had stopped trying to conceive and had had kiddos. So I was in the midst of raising kids, but um, we really, she and I have had to really work through you know, different moments of, of, uh, you know, cause it's a nine month process <laughs> and, and that whole process from day one to the, to the, to the delivery, there's all kinds of things that can be triggering for somebody um, who is, you know, who has experienced infertility, whether they're still in it or, or beyond it. So it was hard. What were, what wisdom was there? Um, was there, a healing moment, uh, revelation, wisdom. Was there something or some kind of advice you can share? Because many women deal with that. You know, they want a child so bad and they see it's like everybody around them is getting pregnant. They're not. Um, it's a very real thing. It's a very real uh, feeling that's warranted, you know. Um, and so what kind of advice can you give somebody, you know, how are you able to be able to have peace with that and celebrate them, you know, mm -hmm. in their pregnancy? How, how did you come to that? During, during those years of trying to conceive, um, when that was happening, 
was a little different than kind of it's been in recent, you know, in recent years or before I wrote the book. Um, partly because, you know, partly because honestly, I, I, I was busy with my, my, my own kiddos. But, you know, I think in the, I think my biggest piece of wisdom would be to, to not um, try to say to yourself that you shouldn't have the feelings you're having. In other words, like, it is okay to have both pain and joy, mm -hmm. um, you know, pain for yourself, joy for your friend, joy for your sister uh, at the same time. And it's really important. I found it extremely valuable and healing whenever I could talk to those people about it um, and just say things like, you're doing nothing wrong, but I feel left out. And I feel super jealous and I feel um, I'm just really sad. And it may be that, you know, you can't go to certain events. You can't go to a baby shower, you know, to allow yourself to do that. Um, and then if there, but, if, but sometimes you can't skip something. Right. And, and so it, it's, it's when we, I think, try to force those feelings out of our, our, our heads or our hearts that we, um, struggle, I think, the more, and when we let others in, because most time, most of the time, those close to us who are experiencing pregnancy, um, they know that we might be going through some hard things. And man, if we can just talk it out with them, even a little bit here and there, I think that can help. That's hard. Yeah, that's hard. And I didn't do it well, the, you know, the whole the whole way by any means, but I did have to have some hard conversations. Well, and I just want to say, um, because I know the family, because I'm part of the family, <laughs> um, is that um, they, there's three sisters mm -hmm. and they all live close together. And they, um, and even um, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law, they are very close family and they are there for each other. And so, you know, I think in families, in relationships, at, we all go through things and, um, but it's that grace and that being that you love someone. And um, I, you know, I just, um, they're just a wonderful family. So I just, I wanted to share that because I think you have such a wonderful, close family and that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to ask you, um, were you ever angry with God or um, did you ever question him? Like the word, why am I going through this? Did you ever, did you ever have that conversation with God? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think it's kind of this during uh, the infertility journey. I think it's kind of a, a constant underlying, you know, thread of conversation, you know, and it's hard. I mean, it's, it's almost seems impossible not to ask, you know, why, or why not me, or, um, you know, and why not me in that set, in this case. So, you know, I, I don't remember, I, I remember a couple times just being super angry with God and, but more so just angry with the situation, um, and wanting so much. I mean, anger is a huge part of this journey. And I, but I think it's hard because there's not, um, a source to vent. There's no one to blame except for God, I suppose. But um, even then, you, I think for, for those of us like following Jesus, you, you, you still know, you can still rationalize in your head. Well, you know, all kinds of people have all kinds of trials in life and they don't make sense. And, and some of them, you know, you, you are far worse or far more devastating and so you you try to talk yourself through that and and not have that anger and then um so it's a cycle i feel like of of figuring out the best ways for yourself to process that anger um i didn't always process it well i, I write in the book i should have written more i should have journaled more and sometimes what i found especially after my twin got pregnant um especially the second time at age 45, that it was just so raw that I, um, I often couldn't. 
I often couldn't. It was the jealousy, the anger, it's all tied up together. I, I just, I couldn't process. And that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a stuck feeling, and it's, that's, a really, that's a really tough place to be sometimes. So I have a lot of empathy for, for women and even men who are struggling in that sense, you know, with those moments. I think um, going from that place of anger and grief and jealousy, you know, they're all bunched up together. And like you said, it's a cycle. I think for you to step outside of that and even write in this, write your book, that alone is courage because mm -hmm. it causes you to process, to face some things. You know, God meets us in those places and speaks to us and comes in and, and heal. So um, yeah. it's hard to get out of that, you know, but the enemy wants to keep us there. So I feel like mm -hmm. you stepping out and writing your book, you talk about what a healing process it was. Um, how far into your book did you, you know, did you feel the Lord's presence with you as you were going? Did he speak to you? Um, was it right away or was it when, you know, halfway through your book, you know, share with us what that looked like. Wow. It's such a special, like, in a sense, special memory or special experience because, you know, I'm part of a writer's group called Writers on the Rock here in Colorado, and it is a phenomenal support group, you know, a group of supportive writers. And so we always talk about writing with God and writing um, for God and, um, not leaving him out of the process. And so I was very mindful of that. I was often encouraged to write this. It took me a long time, but when I would, you know, there were just certain steps along the way, like after a counseling session one time, realizing that one of her questions, and I write about this in the book, one of her questions was so helpful to me. And I thought, oh, questions are so powerful. Questions are what Jesus used to teach and to help heal and to help instruct. And I'm going to make my chapter titles into questions because when you're going through a healing process and grief, there's, there's so many questions. There are so many questions, you know, that you're dealing with. And so each chapter. And so I felt like God gave me the structure of the book in that way. And, and, Oh, I, and I can remember sitting many different places, coffee shops, you know, um, when I would be writing and, and having writing about a certain topic or a certain chapter and, um, just asking God to to be with me that day and to, um, you know, getting emotional, feeling the healing during those days. Um, and then something similar happened with the title during a women's retreat, hearing a speaker talk about be feeling barren in life. And, and I had been looking sort of for the title. Um, but then later wanting to add beautiful, and that's kind of a whole other story. But yeah, I mean, I knew... Before I set out to write this book, um, that I wanted it to be a guide. I didn't want it to be just a memoir. It's not just my story, but I knew it would it, it would serve two purposes. One for my own healing. I needed to process in very specific ways, which is what a lot of the chapters do. Um, process the loss. Process what it means. Process what it, how it's changed me. But then once it was finished, it was very clear to me that to be obedient, I needed to share it with, with others because I, I just have, I just, you know, have no countless um, folks who are, who are dealing with it. And whenever I mention what my book is about or that I'm, that I was writing it, they would say, you know, they know very close loved ones who are struggling as well. So. Yeah. And I, I loved um, how, um, because I have my own copy um, and I was going through it and I love how each chapter, one in particular, you wrote, um, you made a list mm -hmm. of the things that you were going to miss yeah. from, from not walking or, you know, not going through that natural process of having children. And you had everyone, you, you made that suggestion that people mm -hmm. do the same things is writing out the loss, what they were going to miss. Can you talk about how God gave you that? I, um, I, a friend, I was part of an infertility group of, of women who um, early on in our, in our 
stories, you know, we, we had met and we kept meeting and it was, a, it was a vital, helpful group for me. And one of the women um, shared how her counselor, and I talk about this in the book, how her counselor um, or a therapist or something had given this idea to, to, to catalog in writing the things that she was going to miss out on by not experiencing pregnancy. Um, you know, again, sometimes we try to skip over the details in order and, and kind of move, jump over the, 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 the hurdle or the loss and not move through it. And so this is a matter of moving through it in order, you know, in order not to dwell on it. Because that's, you know, often the struggle is I would dwell and I wouldn't ever process and relieve myself of the, the weight of it. And so, you know, I say, make a list, um, write in the book, there's, you know, there's, there's lines to do that, and then do with it what you want, cross it out, um, make it on a separate piece of, piece of paper, burn it, keep, put it in a folder, whatever feels right. I think everybody, my goal was to have um, a book that would guide people through things that would help them really be able to um, just feel a lessening, a, a, a loosening of the, the tightness of, of that tension that we feel when we're, when we're not healing from it. And what the scripture that always comes to mind or that was coming to mind when I saw that and even now is Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 mm -hmm. that says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. Mm -hmm. We were never meant to carry mm -hmm. those kind of emotions or things. And by literally writing them down and like giving them up, um, however that looks like to them. For me, there, there is that in that scripture, it's like a divine exchange yeah. because you're giving him hit your heavy yoke and you're taking on his and he's giving mm -hmm. you something in return. And I just love that list because they're taking those emotions. Yeah. They're taking all those losses and writing them down and, and unloading them. Mm -hmm. and I just thought that was such a, a great thing. And then if we can just learn to give it up to the Lord, like he says, mm -hmm. and there's a place of rest that we come in by doing that. Yeah, yeah I think that, go ahead. Well, I was going to just say, I think that's that rest and peace about the situation, whether we're still in it, infertility or, or many years past it. Um, I think that's often what we're seeking and struggling to find. And, you know, I think it's important to remember, too, though, that that while it's helpful when we do these things, it was so helpful and important for me, um, the, the, the healing process, like for anything, is not linear. It's not a once and done. And what I learned is, like, I could go through a season of rest, of peace from it, and then be triggered deeply, harshly, and intensely, and... And then what do I, you know, how do I process, process that? And I didn't, I didn't quite want that intense um, triggering anymore. So that, that kind of back and forth, nonlinear healing process, I think is important because um, then it takes off some of the pressure, I think, from us that we're supposed to be healed. But we should be healed by now. Well, maybe not. And that's okay. Let God, let, you know, maybe it's an invitation to come to God again. And so, you know, that can be hard to feel like you're not quite past it. I was just going to say the taking off that yoke and the heavy burden, you know, just like we have to empty our mind, we have to repent daily, you know, of our sins. We have, I think that's a daily process. Mm -hmm. We carry things throughout the day that are not meant for us to carry. Mm -hmm. And we can't bear fruit when all that, when we're, smothered with all the stuff that's not from the Lord. You know, even in the garden, we have to weed out all of the, pull out all the weeds and everything, right? So that, or prune the fruit. And I think um, some things are just a daily process. We just have to come to the Lord daily and trust in Him. Empty our mindsets. You know, like you had to empty your mindset of how a family uh, was going to 
you know, how you were going to have a family. It didn't look like you thought it was, you know, it was the Lord's way, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that's a process everybody has to walk through. Yeah. That's yeah. And for, for themselves, you know, like, um, mm -hmm. and not, not necessarily, um, hearing it from others, but to, but to be able to, to, like at the end of the book, I talk about, or I, I ask the question, where are the blessings? And I talk about mine. That's my list, you know, and each woman, man, um, you know, whenever it comes to sort of dealing with the trials that we've been given in life, we, it, it, we, it's nobody can sort of force the, that, that understanding of perspective or blessings mm -hmm. on us, you know, and it's, so it takes some work and that's, that, that's a process for sure. And, you know, part of the process is having community. Mm -hmm. And you talked about um, having an infertility group mm -hmm. um, and how they were there. They they are there to help you walk through this. So um, what kind of um, would you would you recommend women finding a group um, to help them with this process? I mean, I, it was invaluable to me. I, I definitely would. Um, I know it can be hard to share or to reach out or to, you know, pursue that. And because often we don't talk about what we're going through and it's an invisible sort of struggle for a lot of people, which is part of what's hard when you're struggling with it is it feels um, invalidated at times. But, but yeah, if, if I hadn't... I just think it, it means the world when you are surrounded by people in an intentional way to people who, who, who get what you're going through completely, you know, who you can laugh with, cry with, um, complain with, um, and invent with, you know, not necessarily to, but vent with. And because a lot of times the venting is the vent, the venting needs to happen. It has to go somewhere. Yeah. And so, you know, if you really sit, not at somebody, but into the air with safe people. Um, it's, it's, it's just so helpful. Yeah. And they know what you're going through. Yeah. It's not just anyone. They, they could be a, a, a little ahead of you. Um, and part of your venting too, or you're talking about it. It ha not only helps you, but it helps them because they're walking through that process with you. Mm hmm Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we have a question from one of our viewers. Your uncle. <laughs> um, did adopting Hudson and Beckham have an impact on your feelings and emotions involved with infertility? Of course. You know, I, I mean, it's one of the one of my fears in writing the book was was writing and wanting to speak to women who are infertile, but, but knowing that, you know, my story involves becoming a mom and that, you know, so I, so I realize I don't speak from a vantage point of, of still experiencing childlessness. Um, but when we adopted the boys, you know, the focus became motherhood and it, you know, it's a whole other journey and, and, there are layers with adoption that are um, beautiful and, and um, hard and difficult, and I wouldn't change it for the world. It, it made a huge impact for a long time in how I accepted, you know. I mean, there gets to be a point where um, that you just, you know, I had to accept I'm never going to get pregnant, and I never have. And so... You know, I don't know if if had my sister, my twin, whom I'm just, you know, closer than, you know, almost anybody to, um, except for maybe my family, but, you know, the, had she not gotten pregnant, um, especially at such a, you know, a, a little bit older, that if I, that I would have written the book, that I would have needed that kind of healing, that I would have been triggered so much. Because it, you know, I don't have a lot of friends around me getting pregnant and pregnant having baby showers. It's not quite the same sort of world that I'm living in. Um, so it's interesting to wonder about that. So it helped. It helped in the sense of wanting children. I mean, obviously, it, it made all the difference. Um, 
it didn't erase. That's the important thing is it didn't erase the desire I had for pregnancy and to experience mm -hmm. pregnancy. And so I needed to figure out why was that drive for pregnancy so important. And you know, I, I, when I when it came to writing the book and researching what it means, you know, what barrenness in the in the Bible kind of talks about, and I just started realizing, you know, it is okay to grieve this because it is a God designed thing. Yeah. Our bodies, you know, it's 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 such an elevated thing, even in church culture, which is sometimes a problem. You know that, and I write about that in the book too. So, so it's kind of that both and, like yes, both. I was so so re relieved and happy to be a mom, but at the same time, I still had those feelings of wishing I had been pregnant. Mm. So good. Well, how did you know, what, how would you advise people? How did you know when to really stop pursuing, um, you know, infertility and go in that route or, how, you know, trying to conceive to you finally came to that decision of going towards adoption? Um, you know, we, we had, um, I would say, specific like you know instance of, of a certain pregnancy that just made me kind of just a, a, like fed up almost like like again nobody's fault just happened and I was just like I'm done I just kind of I just I'm done trying to think about pregnancy I knew adoption would be something both of us would um, would love and it, it came down to do we pursue further fertility treatments or, or adoption, um, pregnancy or motherhood. You know, it's kind of a bottom line type thing. And it, for us, again, I want to say like everyone's different and everyone has, makes, has, has to make different decisions based on their um, relationship and themselves. Um, but at that point, that's what we decided. Mm -hmm. And then it felt right. And how long can you just talk a little bit about, um, how long did it take to go through that process once you started it? And then when you decided to get back on the list, how quickly it was for you to get the second one. So our adoptions were, um, the first one took about a year and a half and then the second one took about five months. Yeah. So the second one was much faster, but you just, again, like with pregnancy, I guess you just never know. Right. It's been wonderful. Were you writing this book during that time you were going through the adoption? Where, where in the timeline did this book fall and all that? That came after the fact. Yeah, that's a good question. Is I mean, and, and you know, in hindsight, it, in some ways, I probably uh, could have done more at the time to process and write, even journaling about my experience, my feelings. Um, but I just didn't for whatever reason, and and then. So I wrote the book within the last few years of now, and we adopted in 2009 and 10. Mm. So it was several years after. And, and like I said, it was really a matter of, the book was really a matter of, I'm still being triggered. I'm still struggling with this. But, and my, you know, when, and when, again, when Angie got pregnant, it was just like, I need to, you know, after a while, I just, I wanted the future to look a little different, to look freer. And that's kind of what I want for, other women too who feel still burdened with it and triggered a lot mm -hmm. well there are women that are um able to conceive but because maybe circumstances um they're never able to have children do you address that in your book also yeah i i was mindful of that i try to be mindful of women in many different situations, many different situations, whether I've never been married, whether, um, uh, preg you know, um, even if they've miscarried, but just never given birth, um, any situation where maybe they married later and for whatever reason, um, she and their husband, you know, and her husband did, couldn't, couldn't have children. So I do try to address that as much as possible. Um, and, but again, the focus became clear, or it became clear to me that the focus would be on people who are grieving, never being pregnant, never giving birth and, and going through that sort of nine month process. Mm. 
That's good. There's a lot. Um, I personally know people in that situation and it's good to know that they can receive healing from this book. I want to put your uh, cover up close with your book because you have a beautiful cover. You said the Lord gave you the title and I just love, um, I love how God leads us in assignments uh, in this book and he gave you the title and led you to this beautiful cover. Can you share with us a little bit about that and what Psalms 6512 means to you? Yeah, that was a fun process. I mean, I'm, um, as I shared with you guys, I'm an editor, I'm a freelance editor. So I'm in the business of helping people birth their book babies, <laughs> which is mm -hmm. a funny um, pun at this point. But, um, and so it was really fun for me to do these steps for my own book. Um, getting in, in touch with a graphic designer, starting to, when I finally sat down to say, what should be on my cover? Um, and I didn't, because I'm not graphically artistically inclined, I just um, didn't know what to do. And I started brainstorming a little bit with my husband and thinking about the term barren, because at the time the title was just going to be barren. Um, I later kind of realized in talking to some friends, um, who have experienced infertility that, that the term barren, as precise as it is, is harsh and even triggering. And so I wanted to add beautiful and not but beautiful, but instead barren and beautiful because it's that both and again. And you know, the reality is life is life is beautiful mm -hmm. um, when we're when we're experiencing barrenness. And barren, you know, I mean it it may not just be infertility. It may just be um, like we just talked about a minute ago that that the um, just not not having experienced it. You may not be infertile, but you may never have experienced pregnancy, and that's still a loss. And so that's kind of my my target. But the when I was searching for an idea for the cover, I I thought of the opposite of barren. What's the opposite? What are we working toward? What are we hoping for? in the future you know joy was a huge theme um for me wanting to find more joy live my future in in more joy and freedom and when i looked up when i thought of the opposite of barren i thought of the word lush and when i looked up the word lush in the bible i found psalm 65 12 so it's the one of the first pages in the book the grasslands of the wilderness become a lush pasture and the hillsides blossom with joy and so I asked my designer to take, you know, a floral, tropical floral image and take it somehow from black and white to, to color as, as a metaphor for, you know, finding more lushness and vibrancy in life. So, I so. love how God pulled it all together. It's just beautifully it and is. perfectly put together, all of it. Yeah. And... That. This, you know, uh, we were talking about the scripture the other day, and you you said you mentioned it in your book of Isaiah 61 that talks about he takes the ashes, he makes beauty for ashes. And in, in your book, that this book is what God has is using those ashes that you had, and the fact that you use beautiful in there is is awesome because. Ladies, I'm just saying, if you are walking through this, this would be a great book for you to understand how God wants to turn things around and in your life and bring healing. Mm -hmm. And one other way he brought beautiful things from your ashes is Hudson and Beckham. So without a doubt, Hudson and Beckham are the joy are so of you and Andrew's life. And so can you share how... Uh, you ended up finding joy in this trial. Mm. You know, I think what comes to mind is like countless moments of um, of joy with joy with the boys, joy with Drew. Um, just realizing how glad I am for them in my life, but also um, just joy from with with god joy from like writing the book and it might sound cheesy but like 
if there have been many moments while I've been processing, as I've written the book, where where God was speaking to me. And like, there's parts in the book where I sort of imagine myself um, as God talking to, to the reader. And when I wrote those, I imagined him speaking to me. So, you know, so that, and even rereading them now, it's like, it, it just, I know that he was at work. And so that brings me a lot of joy, you know? And, and I mean, I can think of, you know, just countless moments like that. So, so I think that for others, you know, and I talk about this at the end of the book about encouraging women and readers to just, to find what it is, whether it's a book, whether it's a song, whether it's um, a piece of artwork or photography or whatever our gifts are, we can use our gifts, we can use our, our, our work, our skills to meet with God to process this issue somehow. I don't know what that looks for everybody, but for me, it happened to be writing a book. Um, and so I just encourage people to find what that is. And it's it's work, you know? It, it We sometimes have to do the work to heal, but God will be you know, ahead of us and with us when we're doing it. Well, and I, I just want to say that, you know, God turns our pain into our purpose. And God birthed something so beautiful in you. He, he birthed healing through you for other people who are going through this. Mm -hmm. So he took your pain and turned it into your purpose. And through this book, he birthed this healing that you are going to heal so many women and, and um, allow them to be okay with feeling what they're feeling and go on that and go on that journey with them. And, um, and I just think it's beautiful. And I want to say um, as a, as a mom, uh, I'm wa I am walking this along with um, some people in my family. And if this is not just for the women that are walking through infertility, it's for family members. Yeah. Because we talked about this the other day is that she talks about, you know, what, how do we, we mean well when we go to talk to you and, and ask, you know, how, how things are going or whatever. But sometimes it, it can be insensitive. And so I'm just saying, if you are um, a parent, a grandparent, uh, an aunt, an uncle, sister, whatever, mm -hmm. that um, you have people in your family that are dealing with this, I would suggest this book for you, that you pick, you pick up this book and read it. Because we need to understand too, mm -hmm. what they're going through. Because Danielle and I've never walked this road, no. but we need to understand there are a lot of women out there that are. So this is not just for women who are dealing with infertility. It's for anyone to be able to help, to be the Aaron and hers, to be the one that lifts them up and helps them walk through this and do it in a sensitive way. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. Well, Debbie, you mentioned you have another book, you know, Arthur's. I think it's hard just to write one book and that you have another book coming out. Um, can you give us just a little insight on the heart of this next book? Well, I wouldn't say that it's coming out. It's just a, it's just a seedling of an idea <laughs> that came to me. Um, so was, soon after I finished this book, I was missing the process. I was missing you know, drafting the chapters. And I thought, oh, I, I need another project. Well, a couple, not actually months, a, a couple of weeks later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. This was last um, January, 2020. And so I soon had another journey to, um, that I've been walking for a year and some. Um, and on, on the anniversary of my diagnosis day, God just gave me the idea of a book to, to, of stories, of different people's stories, of um, experiences with anger, fear, and sorrow while walking, the, you know, the cancer road. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking about and hoping to yeah. 
to work on soon. Yeah. Well, what an exciting thing that God, how God is using you yeah. in so many ways. Yeah. And um, we are have been have really enjoyed yes. having you on this morning and just hearing your story. Mm -hmm. And I, I really believe that there are a lot of women that are, are really being touched this morning. And um, we really want to suggest that you just get this book. You will be totally blessed. Yeah. Is your, your book, is it available on Amazon or how can they yeah. get your book? Yeah, it's on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we've really enjoyed having you on here. I know this um, porch talk is going to touch a lot of viewers. Um, we just, we, we just know that God is going to meet you right where you're at and he's going to walk you through these journeys. And um, I just believe that you have an anointing and a gifting for healing yes. and other people, you know, and the Bible says we talked about this the other day. It's hard. I was even thanking him on my walk uh, for him to make that scripture, my favorite scripture. And it's not one many people want to hear. And it's in first James to count all your trials joy. And we don't understand what that looks like or how to do it, but it's in the trials and the purifying and the stretching and the learning. Um, that's where God comes in and that's where he strengthens us. We get to see a side of him that we normally probably wouldn't see. And if we just trust him in that time and let us, you know, let him walk us through that, that valley, Psalms 23, then God, I, I've been seeing this a lot lately, uh, I don't, it keeps coming up about how God prepares a table, you mm -hmm. know, that we sit at the table and we eat in front of our enemies and That's that right. the enemy can't have us because God's with us and he turns mm -hmm. everything out for his good. So we just thank you so much for having courage and sharing your testimony, because when we're transparent is when we can help other people who are going through the same thing. Yes. And. And, you know, the thing is, is while, as we're walking through this, we are gaining spiritual growth and muscles. Absolutely. So um, I know that we can't wait to hear your, for your next book to come out, just to hear about all more of what God has done. Yeah. But um, so we, um, would you mind closing us in prayer for our poor child? Thanks for having me. Yeah, let me pray. <laughs> Jesus, I thank you for being here right with us now. I thank you that um, you are ready and willing to heal and to speak to our hearts. Lord, I thank you that you catch every tear. And so I pray, Father, that as tears might be falling now, Lord, you would, um, you would hold in your arms, these women and men who are struggling with infertility. Help them to see your face, feel your presence. God, I thank you for your promises that you'll be with us, that you'll go before us. I thank you for your word that teaches us to be still and know that you are God. Lord, we, we can know that you're in control but at the same time, Lord, I thank you that you that you are the Father of all compassion and, and understand our, our feelings. You understand our feelings more than we even understand them ourselves sometimes. And so, Lord, thank you for that. Because there's often a tension of feeling like we need to trust you, but we're struggling, we're hurting so badly. So thank you for allowing us to rest in that tension. Help us to rest. I just pray, Lord, for those listening, that you would help help the healing process to continue. That it Help us remember that it doesn't necessarily end at a certain definite point, but that we can continue um, to grieve and continue to process and, and seek you for comfort. Thank you for Danielle and Kim and chance to be with them today and Lord bless them and, and what they're doing with Coach Talk. And I just I, I pray Lord for blessing for all those listening. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for joining us and we'll let you go for now. It was a pleasure. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for having me. 
And we're going to post the link on Amazon in the comments. So you can go to Amazon and grab her book. Awesome. All right. Bye, bye Debbie. Bye. Have a blessed bye. weekend. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Wow. That was really, what courage, what courage and strength to share her story. It is not easy. It's not easy to be transparent sometimes, but you know, God blesses that because it helps so many people and it's it part does. of the healing process. It does. And I'm, yeah. I'm just so proud of her, yeah. of, of her courage. Yeah. Cause it is, it, it takes a lot to it be does. vulnerable, to be transparent and yeah. put w the raw feelings out yeah. there and put yourself on the line. like Yes. That. Yeah. And, and all to do, uh, to help others. Mm -hmm. And so it's exciting. So make sure you go out and get your copy. You can get it on Kindle. Mm. My favorite. I thought I remember. And then, um, yes, you can get it on Kindle because mm -hmm. I read the, um, you can get a sample on Kindle, but you're going to want to buy it because it's an awesome book. Well, and also because, you know, when you read it, you may run into somebody. Mm -hmm. And if you have it, you can pass it on to somebody else. Yes. And spread the healing. Well, because like I said, it may not, you may, there may be people that's going to watch this and they are not walking through this, but you know, we need to understand what to do to, to help. There's a lot of young women that are out there walking through yeah. this and we want to be sensitive. We want to be able to help them and, and to be there to help them walk through this. And this is a great, this is a great, whoops. I'm yeah. always opposite. This is a great resource. Yeah. So go to Amazon, buy your copy. Her name is Deb Hall and it's, Beautiful and barren, discovering joy and healing in the wake of infertility. Yeah, that covers just gorgeous. It I love it. It is mm -hmm. so fruitfulness. Mm -hmm. It's fruitfulness. Yep. Well, we've enjoyed having you on today. Thank you for taking the time to join us and watch this episode of Porch Talk. If this has blessed you or you know somebody who's walking through this journey, please like and share. You can go to the YouTube channel, War Room on Wheels. Please like and share, subscribe to it, and share this video with them. Spread the word. Um, well, we got an exciting week next week. I'm glad to have you back. It's always so, we didn't have a poor talk last week. Um, I think at some point, uh, maybe, I don't know, next week we'll be sharing a little bit about uh, what God is doing and um, things that are going. God's got a lot of new things going on in our lives. And that may be what we talk about next week. And so uh, I just had a lot of other assignments, but we're, we always enjoy being on here and um, it's always exciting to see who God's opening the door to. Yes. Yes. And we, we have, never know. we have some up and coming. Mm -hmm. I've, I've put some, thrown a few, I've thrown some out feelers there. out too. So be praying and with us. So we're excited yes. and we were excited. Um, if y'all missed, um, Charles and mm. I, I'm going to butcher his name, Charles von Standen. If you missed hey, him, you said that pretty good. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, it, it, from South Africa, the pastor from South Africa, you're going to want to go back and watch yeah. that. He was amazing yeah. and he's going to be coming back. Uh, sometime in the future. So it's exciting. Yeah. And so, uh, and next week is our one year anniversary of doing this one year. That's amazing. And it's gone by so fast. <laughs> what yes. I'm amazed is how much we've um, grown, even in the technology, because when the Lord started doing all this, I had to learn how to cut and edit and upload and it would take forever and hours and I was frustrated. And now I can just, it does it in two seconds. I can I got the, ed and I'm like kindergarten level editing, you know, I don't know about all that, but I have to say thank you to my amazing son-in-law mm -hmm. and um, my daughter, Brian yeah. and Kara Day, yes. because all of the thumbnails and marketing that you see on here is my da my daughter she designs them she comes i'll design something and then she will take it and she like ups the game i mean they just look amazing and my son-in-law he's a hard worker wonderful husband and he helps us with all of our technical stuff and so i just want to I just thank God for them. I thank them for being a part of mm -hmm. this, for being a part of this ministry. 
um, they're just such a blessing. And uh, I know God's blessing them because of it. Well, it's, it's been exciting. I mean, even to the little video opening videos we have now. Oh my gosh. Yes. Like so, we look forward to create, aren't they fun to create? They are so much fun. They're and so much fun to create. So, um, but, um, we, we are excited for what God has in the future. Yes. And so we just want to, um, thank you for being with us. And we hope that we see you next week to celebrate our one year anniversary. anniversary. All right. Good to Have see you. Have a great you. week. Have a good weekend. We Bye -bye. love you.